In this video we're going to talk about a very important skill that you really need to know in order to go any further in algebra and that's solving equations. And today we're just going to talk about uh, solving one-step equations. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about what a one-step equation is versus a, another type of equation. But before we get started, let's make sure we all remember the difference between an equation and an expression. An equation is going to have an equal sign somewhere in the problem. An expression is not going to have an equal sign. So an example of that uh, for an expression where you might use the order of operations, you might have 3 squared minus the quantity 2 or 3 plus 7. And then you would use the order of operations to simplify the expression. So expressions you're going to simplify. In this case, we'd get 9 minus 10, which is negative 1. An equation you're going to be asked to solve. So an example of an equation, something with an equal sign, would be x plus 3 equals 5. Now this is a pretty simple equation, and what we are to do here is to find the value of x that will make this equation true. In other words, we could think of it as what plus 3 equals 5. And x is taking the place of that unknown value. And we all know what plus 3 equals 5, that's 2. So in this case, x would equal 2, and 2 would be considered the solution to the equation because it makes the equation true. Equations can get very, very complicated. Um, you could have an equation like... Um, for, I'll, st I'll keep it still to the first power because these are going to be the kind of equations that you're going to be able to solve pretty quick. 4 times the quantity x plus 3 plus 5 times x equals 7. It's pretty difficult just to look at that and figure out what number you would have to put in for x here and here, the same number in both those spots and have it come out to be 7. As a matter of fact, it's probably going to be some kind of a fraction, so even guessing and checking would be difficult. So we have to learn certain techniques in order to solve equations that we can't figure out in our head. Like this one over here, we could certainly figure it out in our head, what plus 3 equals 5. The first time you start solving equations, a lot of them you can figure out in your head, and so some students have a tendency to resist learning the techniques. But my advice to you is to make sure that you learn the techniques because it won't be long before you're trying to solve an equation like this. And if you don't have those techniques, it's going to be near impossible to solve. All right, let's get started solving equations. Finding the solutions to equations. All right, let's um, look at the equation x plus 3 equals 5 again. We know the answer is 2. But well, let's talk about a technique we could use to come up with that answer. An important property that you need to know is something called the addition property of equality. And what that says is if A equals B, then A plus C equals B plus C. A and B are representing the two sides of the equation. And C is what is the difference here. C is being added to both sides of that equation. So if I know two things are equal, then I can add the same thing to both sides of that equation and they'll still be equal. Let's just do a little example before we come back to our equation here. We know um, 3 equals 2 plus 1. We'll just do one without any variables. So this is like my A over here, and this is my B. My B is 2 plus 1. The whole expression, 2 plus 1. And I want to add something to both sides. So I'm going to add something to both sides of that equation. You could pick anything you want. I'll add 10. Okay, if I add 10 to both sides of this equation, I still get a true statement. I get 13 on the left-hand side of the equal sign and 13 on the right-hand side. So that would be true. If I do negative 10, that would be true. I'd get negative 10 plus 3 is negative 7 equals negative 7. It's good to think of an equation as sort of like a, a scale, like a balance scale. Let's see how my art is here. Like a little scale. All right, we've got A equals B. We've got A on this side, on the, on the left-hand side, and we've got B on the right-hand side. And this equal sign here is telling us that it's balanced. 
A has to equal B. So if I add something to one side of my balance, I have to add it to the other side in order to keep it balanced. Even if that's adding a negative, which remember is the same as subtracting. So if I add a negative 10 to both sides, I got to add a, ne or a negative 10 to the left hand side. I have to add a negative 10 to the right hand side to keep it balanced. And that's what the addition property of equality says. So how can that help us solve an equation? Let's go back over here. And I want you to picture this as a balance. So this is one side of your equation represents uh, the left hand side of the balance and one side of your equation represents the right hand side and we know those are equal. Sometimes students will even maybe draw a line here like this to separate the two sides of their equation through the equal sign. When you're solving an equation the goal is to get the variable which I'll just say x by itself on one side of the balance or one side of the equation one side of the equal sign. If we look at our equation here, on the left hand side we have x plus 3 and on the right hand side we have 5. So on the left hand side I need to get x by itself. I, I don't have just x over here, I have x plus 3, so I want to get rid of this plus 3. Basically I want to make it go to 0. So I'm going to use the addition property of equality and I'm going to add something to this side to make that 3 go away. <coughs> so what will I have to add to 3 to make this go away? Well, I'm going to add a negative 3. Now what the addition property of equality tells me is if I add a negative 3 to the left hand side, I have to add a negative 3 to the right hand side. Now what's the benefit of adding a negative 3 to the left hand side? Well this negative 3 and this positive 3 will add together to equal 0. So I'll have x plus 0 on the left hand side which just gives me x. Now on the right hand side I have 5 plus negative 3 which is 2 and I bring my equal sign down and I come up with the solution x equals 2 which we knew. But I just wanted to show you how the addition property of equality could be used to solve this equation. Let's try another one. Let's try one that maybe we don't um, know the answer to right off the bat. Throw some negatives in there. How about x plus 10 equals negative 14? Now some of you may be able to look at that and figure out what you'd have to add to 10 to end up with a negative 14, but for others it's a little bit tricky. So we're going to use the addition property of equality to reach our goal. Remember our goal is to get x by itself on one side of the equal sign. So I'm going to look at the problem. I'm going to recognize the two different sides of my equation. The x is on the left hand side and it wants to be by itself. x is not by itself on this side. We need to get rid of this plus 10. What could I add to this side to make that plus 10 go away? Hopefully you're saying negative 10. I'll leave myself enough room there. Okay, well if I add a negative 10 to the left hand side, I have to add a negative 10 to the right hand side. Well, let's go ahead and do that and see what we get. If I add a negative 10 to the left hand side, this negative 10 and this positive 10 are going to cancel each other out. They're going to equal 0. And so I, all I will have left on the left hand side is x. Bring down my equal sign. And on the right hand side, I have negative 14 plus negative 10 which is negative 24. So my solution is x equals negative 24. By getting x by itself on one side of the equal sign, you will get your solution because then your, your equation will say x equals some number and that number is the solution to your equation. And you can always check and see if that solution works. Go back to your original problem, x plus 10 equals negative 14. Take your solution plug it in for x, negative 24 plus 10 equals negative 14, and see if that's true. Is negative 24 plus 10 negative 14? And the answer is yes it is. And so we know that we got the answer correct. Let's try another one. Maybe you can pause the video and try this one on your own and then start the video up and see how you did. 
how about negative 5 plus x equals negative 12. Go ahead and pause the video and give that a try. All right, well, again, we have the x on the left-hand side of the equal sign. We should probably try one next time where the x is on the right-hand side. And we need to get x by itself, so we need to get rid of this negative 5. I don't really care about the negative 12 right now because my goal is to get x by itself on one side of the equal sign, and the negative 12 is not on the side as the x, so I don't care about that. I'm really focused on getting rid of this negative 5. What could I add to this to make this negative 5 go away? Well, hopefully you said positive 5, because now these two are going to combine and make 0, which is what I want. Now since I added 5 to the left hand side, the addition property of equality tells me I have to add 5 to the right hand side to keep my equation balanced. And then we'll just see what we've got here. So the positive 5 and the negative 5 cancel each other out and we're left with x equals on the right hand side, negative 12 plus 5 is negative 7. So I'm thinking that's my solution. Let's check it out. You don't always have to check it, but if you're not sure about what you're doing, it's a good thing to, to do. And it's a nice way to make sure you've got the right answer. So let's put that negative 7 in for x and see what it would say. It would say negative 5 plus negative 7 equals negative 12. That's a true statement. I have my solution, so I'm pretty happy about that. In the next video on part 2, we're going to talk about uh, multiplying on both sides of an equal sign. So maybe practice a few of those and then come right back and watch that video.